Hey everyone, and welcome to the OT Unleashed podcast. We're reversing the script today. Taking over as a host is me, Stella Johnson. OT Unleashed is here himself with me today, and we're going to take a deep dive into his life over the past year or so. Hey, what's up, guys? You guys ready for this? Hey, Eric. <laughs> Maybe I can just say babes. I don't know. Yeah. That's fine. All right. We've been on quite a roller coaster ride over this past year, haven't we? It's it's been a year. I uh I I would say that a ro- roller coaster is a, probably a good way to put it. Up and down, left and right, spins, swirls. Yeah. All right, let's chat about that a bit. Um so I've been here with you the whole time, but your audience uh they probably don't have the full picture of what's been going on. So start us off from the beginning. July 2023 your time at umhb has come to a close what was your mindset leaving yeah um you know it's interesting because i loved umhb it was such a great opportunity to kind of learn and kind of grow as an educator um but as i kind of you know went from that space i was kind of in a like i don't know somewhere where i wanted to do something different you know like i didn't want to do the same nine to five where I was kind of locked down to a a traditional job doing something that, you know, I've been doing for the last, I don't know, my entire adult life. Right. So, uh, so you and I kind of talked about like some of these things that we really enjoy doing some of the things that we love. There was a lot of projects that I personally wanted to do that. I just didn't really had time for, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, uh, and I think that, you know, when we had these conversations, we were talking about, you know, could we, live without a traditional job like Mm -hmm. you know could we kind of use some of our side hustles and and things like that to kind of you know grow and and become you know kind of independent of the working world Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. does that make sense and uh you know so you know like one of the biggest things that i've wanted to do for quite a bit was do this podcast and that podcast was something that you know like I I think the biggest thing was just getting it off the ground, Mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't have the time to do it. And so this gave me some freedom to kind of flesh it out a bit, you know, get a kind of good idea of what it was going to look like and, and how it was going to go. And the nice thing now is that it's up in place. You know, I'm not like married to having to do everything all the time. And so now it's like, Hey, I have a really cool idea for a podcast and we can sit down and just like jump into it. You know, Mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, tell me about some of these little uh, side hustles and stuff. <laughs> what what has helped carry us through? Yeah, I think one of the big ones was our cakes, right? Um, our cakes were something that, you know, Stella and I had been doing cakes for, I mean, I don't, almost like 10, 12 years. Yeah. And uh, and what's what's funny is that first we did these just like for fun, right? Mm-hmm. And and people started asking, you know, more and more of us like, hey, can you make my cake? Can you make my cake? And we would do it for free at first and spend a whole lot of time doing this. And eventually we we're like, okay, we can't do this for free anymore. We have to at it's, least uh, not ask. Not sustainable. Not sustainable. <laughs> and then we started asking for, for like money for some of them, but we were not charging anywhere. Like we did an entire castle, like a legit castle for like a hundred bucks. Actually, I think it was like fifty dollars. Yeah, I that was I, for a little girl on on Christmas. Yes, it and was. we delivered it on Christmas. We sure did. Anyway, that was anyway. But so since we've gotten better and better, and you know, we kind of created our little business, Johnsonville Cakes, and uh, we've gotten really good at them. Yeah. You know, like you know, Stella is definitely the head of baker. Uh, and, uh, and she runs the show, um, you know, but I think it's just such a perfect, uh, situation for us. You know, we've get lots of orders, you know, now we have cakes every single week, um, orders every single week, uh, stress every single week. Um, you know, and a lot of people have said like, Hey, why don't you branch out, get a brick and mortar. And I don't think we ever want to do that. I don't think it was ever something that we wanted to go bigger than what we could handle. So, um, so we've been doing our cakes and that was something that we knew that we could make, you know, uh, 50 bucks here, hundred bucks there, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there and, mm-hmm. and to kind of, you know, keep a little cash in, 
you know, in play. Um, and now, I mean, it's getting to the point where it's actually a pretty decent little kind of side hustle for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and we could probably Constant. grow it if we wanted to. Yes, uh, maybe someday. Yeah. Not anytime soon. Um, so I've heard you're doing some uh, photography, like legit photography. We all yeah. know that you've done photography, loved photography for so long, but... Do you have an official big boy photography job? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the best. Uh, so uh, another thing was photography, right? So like I knew that I really enjoyed photography. Maybe I could be, you know, um, make that more, be more intentional with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing a, a photo shoot last year, last December for Santa Claus, actually at our favorite restaurant here in Waco. If you ever come, go to this place. It's called Milo, mm -hmm. uh, Milo All Day. And uh, it's the greatest restaurant in town. But um, the owner asked me to do a photo shoot for Santa. Turns out the Santa Claus, his daughter was a photographer. And he was like, hey, you know, my, my, photog my daughter does photography. You should, you know, give her a call. And next thing you know, um, we're chatting and she has a whole real estate photography business. And um, it was kind of a match made in heaven, you know, like I, I have never, I've always had that imposter syndrome with photography that I wasn't good enough uh, that I didn't have skills to be able to say I was a professional photographer, right. but this kind of really like solidified it like, hey, professional photographers hired me to photograph for them to be a to professional, be a professional. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I have been doing real estate photography here in Waco, Central Texas for I don't know what, like six or seven months, eight months, maybe almost mm -hmm. a year now, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so much fun. It's very different. It's not like your typical go out and shoot uh, a human um you know there's very specific types of ways that you do it and we actually had to get our pilot's license to fly a drone professionally um fun fact you're not allowed to commercially fly a drone if you don't have a faa pilot's license and that was a really tough <laughs> like that uh studying for that exam getting through it and being able to get um that license was really cool um but but yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm a professional photographer. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty good. Okay, yeah. so um, let's move on to what's with what's new with you and video games? What's been going on with that? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of you guys know I've done a lot of work in accessibility and gaming and whatnot. Um, and one of the things that uh, leaving uh, that traditional kind of work setting allowed me to do was to be able to dive a little bit more into that. Um, and over the past several years, I've been able to work with different students to kind of help build this uh, space for therapists to go to for for video games and gaming and whatnot. And and over the next probably six months or so, I'm going to be rolling out um, this new website. And if you're listening to this, go check it out. It's it's not done yet, so uh, you know don't judge me. But uh, it's called the Rehab Arcade, um, and it was designed specifically uh, for all those therapists who give me calls and say, hey. I've got this patient and I don't know what to do. And so this is a space where if you're that that therapist, you can go there and it'll tell you everything from from start to finish, evaluation, uh, prescriptions, you know, how to how to do it. Um, and it's uh, both for therapeutic gaming, but also um, you know, that whole kind of space of accessibility and whatnot. And, and, uh, I've also been able to, tra I've traveled to London earlier this year and got to take part in a game accessibility conference. And then, uh, and then here in a few weeks, I'm going to be speaking, uh, in Washington, up in Redmond, Washington, uh, about gaming accessibility and some of my doctorate work and that. So, um, you know, gaming still a kind of big, big part of, of my life. We're doing a lot of good stuff with it. So it's been great. Cool. Um, what about public speaking? What's going on with that? Yeah, I knew, um, you know, one of my good friends, you guys probably know him, Travis Mills. He's a public speaker and he has just really done an amazing uh, kind of job rebounding from a catastrophic injury, losing all four limbs to really making a difference in people's lives. And not only um you know they're just around where he lives but just all around the world and so he has been you know successfully public speaking for quite some time and he and i had a chance to catch up and and talk about um you know maybe me doing this more and one of the things that over the last several years i had been doing is you know i've been getting calls like hey you should come and speak and um would you come and would you be a keynote here and 
And I thought, well, maybe that's something that I could really tap into. Like, what if I actually tried to be a public speaker, right, right. you know? Um, and so again, having this extra time, I was able to kind of do a speaker reel. We even did some fake video. We sure did. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it was fun, you know, like kind of putting some of that together, but you know, anytime that you have, uh, if you want to be a public speaker, you know, you need to have a presence. And so being able to record your, your, uh, speeches to be able to have some kind of visual is a, is a big deal for that type of stuff. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so it was fun. So yeah, that speaker reels out there, you know, we've um, had a lot of fun putting it together and just, uh, you know, we'll see what that, see what comes of it, but yeah. it's out there. And it's another thing that's like off the list that I was able to check, you yeah. know, that I've been wanting to do. Yeah, for sure. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about Parker University. Yeah. Uh, so I guess along the lines, um, I had a good friend while I was at Walter Reed. He was a, the chief of the chiropractor, the chiropractic unit up there. And he came down to Texas you know, several years ago and took over as president at Parker University. It's a chiropractic school there in North Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And, um, you know, we have been fans of each other for quite some time. And he's asked me to speak at his uh, different neurocons conventions things like that and it's been such a really it's been such a fun ride um, working with him and so after i had left umhb um you know he approached me and said hey i would love for you to kind of work with us maybe we can collaborate figure something out to work together um and really it was such a cool match made in heaven um i I went and chatted with their provost and uh, a lot of their leadership team and we came to kind of a place where I could help them with their marketing, um, some of their uh, admission strategies, their OT programs uh, were trying to, they were trying to figure out um, what's the best way to, to amp up those admissions and, and give a really good public light to the programs themselves. And so, um, yeah, so for about seven, eight months, I, did, I, I signed a contract with them and, and absolutely loved it. I loved that team. I loved working with them and really had a fun time, you know, getting to, you know, use some of that creative OT stuff that I, you know, kind of have inside of me. So and just a little bit, <laughs> a little a tiny bit. bit. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's roll that into where you're currently working. Yeah. So you are not with Parker University. It was a short little stint that yeah. was great. Yeah. But now you yeah. are. So, you know, life is crazy, right? Sure. Is. Um, and, um, and as I was working at Parker, I started to have a conversation with one of my friends, uh, in the OT space. And she said, Hey, I'm developing a new OT program there in Texas, just uh, down the road from you and uh, was just wanted to see if you were interested and uh, not really interested, but starting to be very intentional with my time, with my space yeah. and in and, and my um, uh, communication with other people. You know, I came back from, um, I came back from uh, AOTA conference back in April. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I wanted to do was follow up on all those conversations that I had, yeah. you know, so I started emailing different uh, people that um, we wanted to work together. And, uh, and so Shannon was uh, one of these people and she, um, and I followed up, I said, Hey, I just wanted to follow up on this possible teaching position that you, you know, talked about and I was kind of wondering a little bit about that. And so, um so you know i opened a door i walked through the door and i was so well received at the at this place and uh and this is i guess my official announcement i am now um faculty uh first time uh D dr johnson um uh, at uh, tarleton state university and so congratulations I'm, Oh, you're excited about it too. Hey, yeah. you know what? Um, Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just you. So, uh, like, okay. <laughs> but you know, can't live on love. You can't. You can't. We tried. We tried. Doesn't work. It was a good try. Have to have money. <laughs> Turns out. Money and love. Money and love. That's yeah. the. That's the the right ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been at Tarleton, and this program is so cool. Like, 
I can't tell you how excited I am to be a part of this. Um, and, and, and the coolest uh, part of this, so Tarleton, if you guys are not familiar with that, it's a part of the Texas A&M system. And we are focused on rural health. And so, you know, think about the whole world, you know, globally and how they approach independence and life and whatnot. And we know that that's different um, and not just, you know, the traditional approaches that we look at OT for most of the programs that, you know, teach OT. And so we want to focus on that rural health uh, perspective and looking at trying to engage in these communities a little bit more rich and a little bit more full um, uh, to the point where not only is it written in all of our curriculum, uh, rural health, but we are also going to try to um, have, and maybe this is the only program that does this, it's the only one that I know, but we're going to be very intentional with having a study abroad opportunities cool. where we're um, already, I think we have one established in Italy already. Um, we're looking at Spain, we're looking at Morocco, mm. um, and maybe India. Uh, we have a really cool variety of faculty that um, is, is wanting to do this. So it's been really awesome, and I'm so excited about what this program is going to be and so we're right now taking students or uh we're interviewing students and we'll be starting uh june-ish next year so cool. yeah well it sounds like a really good fit because as long as i have known you that is you and ot like yeah. you want to be so intentional and a little outside of the box and yeah. you're very personable um, which I think makes you such a great OT. And I think everybody knows how great of an OT you are. It's not just me. We all know. So it sounds like it's a, it'll be just such a good fit. And I really hope that you're appreciated there. And, yeah. and you know, you're so smart, which I'm not just saying that, but, you know, you really just have a unique way of looking at each individual and what their occupation is what yeah. they want to do with their life yeah. and i think that that's really important um just in all the different ot's that i've met yeah. in my life with you I, I i love when people can see that in you and they understand it and they also want to be that kind of ot yeah. you yeah. know i think it's yeah. really special so yeah I think well and i think that's what we're trying to do right i mean like um if you put your clients first your people first you're going to win every time. And yeah. even when you fail, the intention is that you're going to win. And so you kind of jump back on the ship and go for it. So, yeah. Um, yeah so I'm so excited about teaching again. It was something that I was a little anxious about, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were able to keep the ship afloat and it was fine, but there's just something to say about having that paycheck, you know, yes. every, uh, the expectation of that paycheck every single month, every, yeah. you know, and so, um, so I, I would say that we're probably a little bit more comfortable now, um, but the, the grind was fun. The grind was good. The year was great. Yes. Um, but, you know, I think I'm ready to um, kind of dive deeper into some of the passions that I have mm -hmm. in that OT world. So, you know, yeah. we'll see what that happens, see what yeah. happens there. What do you think was the, do you think that was the biggest challenge in this last year? Just tr uh, trying to figure out where you, where would be a good fit or what do you think? Any advice yeah, in that area? And then know, I do have one more question. Yeah. Those, so so I, I will say at the end of the day, um, if you are going to look at this entrepreneur, um, maybe kind of like little of this, little of that lifestyle, um, you got to budget really well. You have mm -hmm. to budget your time very well. Yes. Um, you know, and I've been doing a lot of reading on productivity, focus, concentration, habits, and stuff like that. And, and I think that being able to establish good habits – um, in an entrepreneur space is going to really help you succeed and kind of take you kind of forward. And, and, and I mean, full transparency, I'm not the greatest at it. You know, I, I'm super distracted. Um, I have all kinds of issues with kind of staying on task. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on being more intentional with planning my time, planning my, um, distractions, all mm -hmm. those things. And so, uh, it's been good so cool yeah um speaking of reading books and yeah. all of that are you working on a book uh, <laughs> well so yeah um this is something that i want to do for quite some time and actually there's two books i'm writing 
That's news, guys. Well, no, no, it's not news. You're going to gonna know exactly. Yeah, the first one's called The Art of Procrastination. <laughs> I have heard of this one. Yeah. I heard of it many years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm writing a book on procrastination, which mm. I will, I, I mean, and, and it's not even a joke. I, have, I literally have pages and words, but I will finish okay. eventually. Yes. Yeah. Someday. I believe you. But the book that I am uh, writing is really exciting because, you know, I wanted to kind of capture some of my unique stories. You know, like I, I know that, um, you know, anytime I speak at a conference, it, it's it's crazy to look back on my life um, and and see how, you know, uh, caring for individuals and others and people have translated to good things and positive things, you know, yeah. meeting the president, um, being on stage with Pink Floyd, uh, eating, you know, uh, Klondike bars with Ro Robin Williams and, you yeah. know, uh, just all these like crazy stories. And, you know, I wanted to capture those in like in, 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 in written form. Um, I've talked about a little bit about them here and there, but, you know, there is, uh, you know, something that, you know, I've, you know, I've struggled with depression for quite some time and finding different ways to battle those mental health uh, type of situations has been something that has really um, kind of been a passion project. And so, you know, so one of the things that I want to do in this book was combine some of those stories with how I've handled, you know, stressful situations, uh, situations that's been tough. I'm going to use a, a lot of time with my mili military history and how, you know, we handle that stuff when we were in Afghanistan and, and at war and when we have these major conflicts and, um, and what that looks like. And so uh, I'm not fin I'm not stuck on this title yet, but it's going to be something kind of to the tune of, um, you know, it says uh, anything is everything. And it's basically a, a soldier's perspective or something like uh, on embracing the sucks. It'll be something like that. But, you know, gotcha. it'll be a self-help type book, but using experiences that I have had over my kind of years of life um, and hopefully you know, we'll help some people out from it, you know, using some strategies that I've adopted and, um, and, 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 and they, web they've worked, you know, so, cool. yeah, so we'll awesome. see, we'll see. I'm going to try to have that done. I can't wait to read them. <laughs> yeah, you probably won't even read it. Just kidding. Mm, we'll she see. lives it every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do we want to do some fun Quick fire questions. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, buckle up, guys. Yeah. I'm gonna have to read off my list here, so pardon my eyes. Okay, you're gonna answer these quick. Okay, 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 okay. What is your go-to coffee or drink order? Okay, so um, fun fact: I don't really drink coffee. He doesn't drink coffee, guys. But <laughs> it is the fall. It is the fall. And I am a sucker for Dutch Bros. Uh, and they have this current, they have this uh, pumpkin, a uh, caramel pumpkin brulee. Yeah. And um, I get it as a frost, so no coffee in it. And it's kind of like a milkshake. And it's got the soft top on it and these little like brown sugar crystals. And it is bala. Yeah. So good. Okay. Um, all right. Number two, which movie or TV show had you wanting more? Mm. Uh, so believe it or not, so we just binged Lost for a long time. We did. Yeah. I, I'm up to date, people. I had never seen it before, and we, yeah, we went on that roller coaster. Yeah, went on the roller coaster, and we went through the whole series, which was very long. And I just feel like, I mean, if somebody said they were going to do a Lost reboot, um, I would totally do it. You know, like I would. I'd be so in for that, Same. you know, but, uh, so I think I like, I would love more lost, you know, um, and anything stars really, you can do anything. So. Well, we already all know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the last book you read? Uh, I've been reading a bunch of books right now, um, based off of kind of self-help and, you know, just doing kind of the best things I can Let's see cake in the oven. We gotta, you know, it's real life over here. Um, but a lot of self-help books. I, I just read Atomic Habits uh, a couple weeks ago. Excellent book. It talks about changing kind of your 1% um, one percent things that will help you overall uh, kind of increase, you know, your productivity, your habits, all those things. Um, but um, I also did, uh, there's one called um, The Big Leap. 
that was a really great book. Um, loved it. Uh, my good friend uh, Ingrid Connects, who we're going to be presenting at AOTA together, she recommended that excellent book and it's talking about an upper your upper limit problem and being able to kind of surpass where you hold yourself back um and right now i'm um i'm reading a book called um the power of habits or the something like something that. like that something about um, habits. but uh anyway but i've been going through a lot of things and really looking at my habits and the habits being stuff that you can kind of it's not really the act action that you're trying to accomplish it's the build up to the action that you're trying to manipulate so that the action ends up being um, what you desire. So it's been great. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. What is your go to OT model mm. or frame of reference you rely on? So my very favorite of all the models, all the frame of references, it's called um, the IRM. It's the uh, intentional relationship model. And uh, and I love it so much because it talks about who you are as a therapist and how you can manipulate who you are to fit your client best. And kind of like we were talking about yeah. being, you know, being that chameleon yeah. who can change on a dime to fit the patient's needs is is everything. Yeah. Um, IRM, hands down, my favorite. Cool. What's your favorite song at the moment? Oh, okay. So I'm super into Chapel Roan right now. My husband is a teenage girl. It's Everybody. true. It's true. Um, but Chapel Roan, and honestly, I get my music from my teenage <laughs> daughter. So yes, let's that's be fair. True. That's and it's good. It's good. But Chapel Roan, um, I really like Red Wine Supernova. Um, that's a, a really fun one, and. Um, you know, I, I, I've been just kind of jamming on a lot of that uh, chaperone stuff, so. Awesome. Okay, what is one app that you can't live without? And I assume by app you mean on your phone, not an appetizer, correct? What's one appetizer that you couldn't live without? Oh, I already know the answer. Oh, do you? I think so. Hmm. Is it fried pickles? <laughs> yes, fried pickles, of course. I love them. I, I have to get them every time I see them. I know this isn't about me, but no. it's like I have to sample all the fried pickles in the world to see which place yeah. will have the best ones. But I believe you are saying app on your phone, correct? Yes, app on my phone. What app on your phone? I am going to see if you could guess what this is. Is it Pokemon Go? See, this is why you need to marry your best friend <laughs> because they know you so very well it's probably pokemon go yeah i mean i just like it a lot yeah i think it's kind of your like you don't really play a lot of video games themselves and i almost feel that that's probably your video game yeah like you're kind of yeah out of your head yeah type thing yeah i yeah. i wish i i wish i was able to game more time doesn't give me that so pokemon go kind of gives me my time out of my head yeah that's what oh, I thought. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. What's your favorite dessert? Dessert. Um, I'm an ice cream junkie. Like literally, I will eat ice cream all the time. Yes. Um, I love it so much. Yes. I would, if I could eat it every single day, I would. Um, if I could eat dessert for breakfast and dessert after lunch and then dessert after dinner, I would probably do that as well. Yeah. I love ice cream and I love all kinds of things. And I think at different times I enjoy different uh, flavors, but uh, I'm a sucker for vanilla bean, you know, and uh, you know, uh, but I love a good strawberries and cream or, yeah. you know, um, a Millennium good Crunch. Millennium Crunch is delicious. Oh, wait, but your current one is really into the oatmeal cream pie by bluebell bro it's actually quite delicious bro the, that is so good yeah so good i'm yeah. into it cool all right. pause all right well um still has got to get the cake out of the oven so we're gonna keep going um yeah let's talk about more about ice cream because that sounds fun um yeah i uh i think i probably had this ice cream problem back all the way into my childhood you know and when we do bowls of ice cream it's like a massive bowl of ice cream you know we don't play around the johnson family doesn't really play around with ice cream we yeah we go I think to town like in y'all's blood yeah like every child if i could get it into my blood it, oh i my would yes yeah. yeah. cakes man it's a thing so anyway but yeah um i think uh little you know anywhere in the world if they have a different type i they had this really cool spaghetti ice in germany growing up oh, yeah, and I'm it was that. uh 
you know, they would basically press out vanilla into spaghetti strings and they would put um, strawberry syrup and then coconut flakes, which is not my favorite, but, um, but it would be like cheese and <laughs> tomato sauce on spaghetti. It was so good. I would like to try that someday. I'll take you to Germany. Okay, let's go. All right. All right. What is your favorite self-care strategy? Uh, lately, I've really been enjoying, I've been doing like a face care routine, which mm -hmm. I'm really into. Like I've started to, like as I'm getting older, you know, like I started to see changes in my face, um, just like um, splotches, color, you know, different things. And so I've really, so I asked ChatGPT to help me. <laughs> um, develop a good face care routine and chat GPD did not uh, disappoint um, so now I do like a nice face wash and then I'll do a good toner and then I you know, have a night cream then I have a day cream you know and so uh, I've really enjoyed my face routine it feels good it does feel good yeah and you deserve that and you deserve that <laughs> oh. okay what's one hobby that you've always wanted to try but you haven't yet yet um hobby that i've wanted to try that i haven't um what do people do that they really like and then oh you know what pickleball oh how have i not played pickleball well it's fairly it's not new. that new it, it's, I mean, it's new trendy it's, it's trendy new trendy now. but like i mean how have i not Pickleballed. Well, you get I didn't even held a single record. Often when you not true. It's, it's not true, true, guys. I have witnessed this man um, participate in some different sport uh, kind of things, and he likes to get hurt. It's not true. That's impossible. Can he get injured in pickleball? Is the question, and I then we you. can say yes or we no can, if it's a There's safe only one. one way to find out. There's only one way to find out. That's true. Mm. Good times. Okay. Ooh, last question. Okay. What's worse weather-wise, too hot or too cold? Oh, too hot. Absolutely. I I do not like the hot. It's the worst. Like I mean, yeah, sure. There could be like super duper like uber cold in like the North Pole. Right. But we're talking about like just normal you know, weather. U.S. weather. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Hot like, or cold. I would yeah. prefer too cold. Well, I feel like times. with cold, you can always get Layers. warmer. Yeah. When you're hot, you could take off every single layer, and then the next step would be to remove your skin, and you still are not going to be cooled off. So there's just no winning with heat. Yeah. I mean, even with a pool, it, it just yeah. doesn't. I agree. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Too hot is too hot, and I live in Texas. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> ah, Jinx, you want me to watch or Pepsi? Okay. All right. Well, um, am I reading this part? Oh, <laughs> she sorry. Has to read the, I thought it was his. To, it was she has in to read the outro. Okay. All right. It's time to say goodbye, my friends. Keep exploring, keep dreaming, and continue to unleash the extraordinary in the ordinary. Thank you for joining us on the OT Unleashed podcast, where we want to encourage you to engage, cultivate, and unleash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.